Welcome back to Arguing Semantics. I am here once again from the work site to, today to do a wrap up of my summer blockbuster experience. Overall, it's been kind of a week summer for movies. Um, there have been a couple of big standouts, but nothing. There were only, uh, but for the most part, of a lot of stuff that was kind of just okay. Um, I'm really looking forward to next month because I've been hearing some good things about some of the spooky, spooky month movies, which next week hopefully I'll be able to bring you my first set of reviews for them. Me and my, me and the wife hit the ground running on spooky movies this year. But for now, I'm going to start with a couple of big blockbusters, um, or one big blockbuster, and then two smaller movies, two whodunits, and then talk about some of the TV that I'm watching right now. So to start with, the last big blockbuster I saw this summer was Bullet Train. Bullet Train was uh, pretty good overall. Bullet Train, if you don't know, follows Brad Pitt, who is a um, gopher doing for kind of criminal enterprises, who is sent onto a train to steal a briefcase. While he's there, he finds out that there are a bunch of other people who all want this briefcase and or to kill him or other people on the train. And drama, action, and comedy ensues. For the most part, uh, you pretty much know what you're going to get with this one. Um, for for better or for worse. For the most part, better. It is a very fun movie. There are some very, very inventive fight scenes. Um, some, I think a little bit too much, the movie kind of underutilizes its premise in the sense of it's on a train. And there are a couple of fun sequences that kind of play with that. But for the most part, it's just good action sequences on a plane. Or on a, on a train, not a plane. Woo, it's been a long summer, guys. Still doing 12-hour days. So that's why I'm still shooting like this. But anyway. Um, overall, the performances were good. Uh, the movie has a lot of style. Um, it was directed by David Leach, who also directed Deadpool 2. So it's got a lot of that similar vibes. Some really good big colors. Uh, tight camera movements. And just enough humor to keep it going. The only, uh, all the, I should say the, all the performances are good, including the ones that kind of come out of nowhere. Uh, there are a lot of cameos in this movie, which unfortunately brings me to some of the negatives. One is there's one, there's far too many cameos. Uh, there are so many like, oh my God, it's that guy moments that, uh, or it's that actor moments that by the end of the movie, it's like completely worn out all of its novelty um there's literally one in the last five minutes of the movie and while it is an interesting one that contextualize contextualizes a particular character and or there's one that contextualizes a particular character and another that contextualizes another particular character it just it didn't it didn't totally work it wasn't necessary uh and kind of made me roll my eyes a little bit as far as the story like I said, a lot of it is pretty straightforward overall. Um, there are a couple of plot holes, like why a certain character attacks a certain character and stuff like that, or why they're fighting at all beyond just trying to hold on to this case. Um, and the overall like twists and reveals, while there are some really good ones, a lot of them it's like I've just I've seen them all before. They're all executed pretty well, other than the final kind of twist. The it's been done significantly better in other contexts. Um, it, over, it just, it functioned very well as a movie. It's totally, the plot totally works, and as especially as a vehicle for fun character interactions and decent enough fight scenes. Two pretty great fight scenes in some case. Um, the big shout outs I wanna get, it's Brad Pitt is just undeniably likable. Um, Aaron Taylor Johnson and Tyrese, Oh, what's his name? I cannot remember right now. The guy from Atlanta and like all these other things that I absolutely love him in. I can't remember his name. He, they play off each other incredibly well to the point where I really want to see them in something else together. Um, just, and then uh, also got a shout out Bad Bunny for his 
first roll, roll I was really curious to see what he would do with this and he's got a vibe he um he, j he got cast recently to star in a spider-man universe movie so uh we'll see what he does there but yeah he's got a vibe it was it was good i'll i'm curious to see what he'll do with something a little bit more substantial but i think he pulled off what he needed to here um yeah all together bullet train totally fun movie didn't blow my mind it feels really derivative of a bunch of other projects in many ways um, didn't do quite enough to really stand out. Um, but overall, very good. Uh, always interested to see what David Leach is going to do next. At this point, he's made a couple of movies I've really enjoyed. I'm just really curious to see what he's going to do next. Um, after that, uh, the next big movie we saw in theaters was Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Um, underrated film. Not nearly enough people have seen that one so far. Um, basic premise is that a bunch of friends uh, all meet up for a hurricane party because a hurricane is coming through town so they're all just going to hole up together and hang out and party for the evening. And then a couple of them bring their significant others. Uh, and when they decide to play a game called Bodies, 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 which is a variation on like werewolf or assassin, they even played those, somebody actually ends up dead. And then everybody starts trying to figure out who done it. Um, overall, pretty great movie. I liked, I liked the ending, although I personally, I called it like right away. Um, it, it, re <laughs> it comes, your enjoyment of this movie is really going to come down to how you appreciate the recontextualization of the ending. The movie, it, it changes the movie in a way where it's like, it's not like a satisfying twist in the normal sense without getting into it too much. I still, it, the character interactions and the way the plot plays out was all really fun. Seeing the way these characters interact with each other. They all are distinct, big personalities, um, and they all act at least reasonably realistically for what they are. There's plenty of groan-inducing moments that are based on the type of people that they are in a good way. Just overall, really enjoyed this one, uh, and do recommend it to um, uh, anyone to give it a, give it a try. Get, check it out. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies was definitely uh, underrated this year so far. The next big one I, we saw, you know, I'm saving some of the spooky movies we saw for next week, so I want to start going through those for October. But in between those, we saw See How They Run. See How They Run, starring Sorsha Ronan and Sam Rockwell, is a whodunit based around the production of the West End production of uh, The Mousetrap, which is the Ag Agatha Christie story in London. Um, overall, it is a pretty bog standard uh, whodunit. It is fun. You know, it's another one of, it's like a lot of these movies so far, like the, the story itself that they tell the is pretty straightforward. The ending is actually a really good twist. Um, though a few too many aspects of it were, they were trying to go for self-awareness and ended up just like ruining their own movie by signposting a little bit too much what was gonna happen. But the the twist of the whodunit itself is actually pretty good and plays into some historical narratives around that particular story. Um, the casting is good, everybody is likable. Um, there's, it feels like this is gonna be, they, they wanted this to be like uh, a part one. They wanted to introduce these two characters and you know see what they'll do in the future. You know, you've got your uh, old drunk detective who's clearly going through some stuff, and then the the go-getter police constable, played by Sorcerer Ronan, Sam Rockwell's the detective, and how those two play off each other is pretty great, but it also feels a little bit too standard. Like, that's the thing. If you, they're playing with... There's a difference between playing with tropes and just identifying them. And I think a little bit too much this movie just identifies the tropes and then points them out, but then doesn't do anything interesting with that. But 
That being said, it is still very fun, definitely worth a watch. It's, but overall, it was just okay. That and they did some uh, interesting, like, split-screen cinematography. But one too, once too often, it actually got distracting. And it made it kind of hard to follow exactly what was happening. Um, other than that, it's a very pretty... It's a mostly pretty film. It uh, has, you know, exactly what you'd expect as far as cinematography and art direction for this kind of movie. Totally good. Definitely recommended, but it's a soft recommendation if you're really, really into Agatha Christie movie uh, mysteries. I don't think most people will be too impressed with it beyond that. And then the last movie I want to talk about actually just saw on, just dropped on Netflix, which is Do Revenge. Uh, another kind of, uh, this one is definitely a love letter. I mean, they literally say it to 90s, 90s films. Uh, 90s high school dramas slash revenge stories and all in all really enjoyed it the, t the main cast plays off its off each other very well the basic setup being uh, one girl is ruined she is the kind of uh, kind of the queen of the school in many ways when uh, her boyfriend uh, seemingly leaks a uh, a sex tape of hers and which kind of ruins her reputation she then becomes obsessed with bringing him down and when she meets somebody else who has also similarly been uh ruined in that sense in this case a woman who was a accused of predating on another girl at uh summer camp when they were younger they team up to basically help each other take down the other person's uh other person's uh, predator, whatever, um, <laughs> losing the word right now, but yeah, a la Strangers on a Train. It's got a lot of, a lot of influence from Strangers on a Train, um, and overall it's just kind of, like I said, it's a love letters to 90s, 90s, like, teen dramas slash, uh, teen comedy dramas, like, Clueless, things like that. It's got that vibe, basically, top to bottom, uh, clothing-wise, makeup-wise. I mean, a lot of that stuff's coming back in Vi or back in vogue right now so it totally makes sense that they would go in that direction um and overall it's good i feel like the performances are all pretty solid um other all together okay. and the vibe of the movie is good i feel like the plot overall goes exactly where you expect it to the there is a i mean with any good revenge story there is a twist and then a twist on that twist. And I think it all worked pretty well. It's in all of these movies that we have seen so far have all been like we're doing a particular thing and we're doing it well, but not in any way that's going to shock you. So it's all very, very enjoyable to watch in and of itself without totally blowing your mind, blowing your mind. They are just all very, very easy watch, easy watches. Definitely recommend all of the above and this one included uh the um yeah there's not a really a whole lot else to say do revenge is very fun uh yeah so beyond that going back to some of the other things just some of the other things we were watching the big recommendation for me right now as far as shows is uh sandman we watched and that is excellent the only problem with sandman is that you kind of need to know that it's not a fully continuous story it's more like a series of vignettes like it feels at the beginning like it's going to be telling this continuous story throughout and more of that continuous story is like the sprinkling that goes over everything but each story is more of a, each kind of episode has a series of vignettes more than it does telling one big story although it does seem like they're leading into another big story but we'll see where that goes the comic I think the comic book origins of this story kind of play into that. You know, they're telling these confined stories within a greater narrative rather than just a greater narrative. Um, there are definitely some standouts in that, in that specifically the episode with death um, and was uh, dark in a very, very beautiful and touching way. Uh, talking about death just in general and the way they view it in this universe. Um, and, very, 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 very touching episode. And then uh, the other half of that episode also being you were introduced to Sandman's longest friend. Uh, the friend he has 
uh, the human he has known the longest. And it is excellent how that one plays out. A lot of fun. Also how, with how it ties into some of the other stories. Um, the, once again, performances across, or I shouldn't say the performances are mostly good. There are a couple of performances. I was like, eh, that's okay. Like the girl who is the, uh, um, the vortex was, she was, she was just okay. But other than that, uh, the guy playing Sandman is suitably dour and has a great delivery. Um, the casting across the board, I think is really, really great. I know there's some controversy with a lot of it because they did some gender changing and some uh, race changing, which doesn't bother me at all from as somebody who hasn't wa- you know read the books. I would say everybody seems to be good. The only one that's kind of funny is I, I think there's a uh, a DC issue because they changed John Constantine, who is, you know, a well-known DC character into Joanna Constantine, but you wouldn't notice if you didn't know going in. And even then it all still plays out. Well, it is a very interesting, uh, very, um, philosophical, very, um, it's very story driven rather than plot driven or character driven. If that makes any sense, it's just nice to see something that's just like, we're going to explore a bunch of subjects in a really interesting way with a really interesting character and just go from there. It's not perfect. Um, like I said, sometimes the stories feel like they weren't given everything they need to. Uh, some of the stories, some of the stories end too conveniently. Um, but overall, just a very, very enjoyable and also getting, you know, one more just random. We're going to drop a couple of, We're going to drop one more episode with a couple of stories told in a very different way that don't revolve around the Sandman himself was also really fun. They just randomly dropped another episode and uh, yeah, just overall very enjoyable. Another one to definitely check out. I want to see where they're going to go, where they might go moving forward. There are things that they do set up. That's just like, Oh, this is just too, too interesting to leave, leave where it's at. Um, The only other major things that we have been watching lately are, all things that aren't finished yet, so I don't feel totally comfortable giving a full review of them yet, but uh, we have been watching She-Hulk, which is good. I am very much enjoying it. I think it's carried heavily by its um, excellent performances and very fun characters, even if the stories haven't been super great the whole way through. It is very fun, and you have to know it's just know it's a sitcom going in. I just feel like they could be doing a little bit more with it, but it is very much a superhero sitcom. Um, yeah, there's stuff that they're setting up that I'm like, I'm curious to where it's going to go, and if they're going to, if it's going to end with another big fight scene like all Marvel stuff does, or if they're going to find some other way for the story to play out. I'm kind of hoping they do, but yeah, overall I have been enjoying She-Hulk. And then other than that, it's the other two big ones that are out right now that I'm watching are Rings of Power, Lord of the Rings, which overall I have been enjoying. Uh, It has its highs and its lows. Um, Certain storylines are definitely more interesting and better than others. I feel like this could have benefited from a binge release. Maybe Uh, it doesn't, it just feels like a lot of the storylines we're not getting enough moving forward. I feel like they're trying to do too many things at once with this series, which is why it costs so much is because they're trying to do so much. Like there's, I think five storylines going at once to the point where not all of them are in every episode. And a lot of them get shortchanged and kind of feel like you're getting just the cliff notes version of each of those stories. There's definitely a lot more they could be doing with it. Uh, that being said, stylistically, it's really cool. There are a lot of great fight scenes. The casting is great across the board. I really enjoy the characters that are there. I just feel like because there's so much going on, it's taking too long to get to the point of a lot of these stories, especially with how far we in we're in. I feel like it's just missing that it, it, it hasn't come together yet. Um, I'm hoping it will soon. It just feels like there's a lot of stuff happening and it's not really necessarily moving. It's moving in a direction, but not in any kind of a satisfying way. So we'll see. I think we're, I can't remember how many episodes are in the season, but I feel like we're getting kind of close to the end at this point. Uh, the other big one is of course, house of the dragon, uh, the game of Thrones series. Um, it, which is so far decent. I'm not for everything that this show does incredibly well. It does something else pretty terribly. And my, my biggest complaint is that watching it every season, the, or 
if you talk to people again about Game of Thrones and why it failed in the final season is that it rushed its story to get out to the end and didn't let any of its storylines breathe nearly enough to justify a lot of the characters' actions. Uh, so when you get to the end of the series, it felt like a lot of stuff wasn't earned. It was just arbitrary, or there were things that happened just for the sake of happening. There was a lot of deus ex machina. So, and that's kind of my complaint here, is that the storyline is moving really, really fast to the point where they introduce really, really interesting ideas and then go nowhere with them. There are characters who are introduced and killed off in a single episode that were incredibly intriguing. And they're just kind of gone right away. It doesn't feel like the story knows where it's going or what it wants to. It doesn't totally feel like it knows what it wants to be or where it's going. Um, And then you mix that with every episode having a significant time jump. So you're forced to recontextualize everything that's happening in every single episode. The it makes for a very, very jarring watching experience, especially when once again, you're going for uh, you know, a week in between each episode. There are times where I like the weekly releases and there are times where I like the binge version. And I feel like both of these series could have benefited from a binge release schedule. Just give a little bit more, which is crazy considering how big these episodes are anyway. Like a lot of these are, you know, one hour to, you know, for both Rings of Power and for House of the Dragon. Both have, both have episodes that are, an hour to an hour and a half long and it still feels like I'm not getting enough. So yeah, uh, she Hulk. I'm totally fine with the weekly release schedule. I think that's totally okay. Like I said, it's a popcorn, um, uh, sitcom. And I feel like if it had been released all at once, I would have burned through it too quickly and it kind of would have just washed over me. So I kind of appreciate it in that case. Um, but yeah, overall, it's like all of these, I will give a tentative thumbs up. House of the Dragons, my only like, eh. uh, Rings of Power, I'm just a little bit above, eh. So, uh, but because I think the individual stories they're telling are good, it just feels like we're jumping around to them too much that I don't feel like I'm getting a defined through line to anything. It just feels like I'm watching five shows at once. Um, but yeah, so that's everything I've watched so far. Like I said, I'm going to. We hit the ground running pretty hard with spooky movies. Uh, so we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about a lot of those uh, next week, hopefully. And we'll go from there. So for everybody who made it to the end of this video, another randomly, or uh, ran, um, another rambling review roundup. Thank you very much. Um, I'm really hoping work slows down here soon so I can get back into my office. Although, that's going to be a problem uh, because I've got a baby on the way. So pretty soon here, there's going to be a lot of work going into getting that ready. Although you might get some reviews uh, while I am both remodeling a now nursery and a possibly a bathroom as well. So <laughs> lots, lots of stuff, lots of irons in the fire. But anyway, that being said, my name is James. Thanks for hanging out. This has been Arguing Semantics.